Listen, I'm supposed to tell you that you cannot come in here because there's comics in here, but I'm not going to say it because Paul Prevenz is over there and he's going to let you in anyway. See ya. Of comedians hanging out with some friends. You're not supposed to be here, but if you're cool, you can come in. If you've ever been offended by anything, don't come in. It's rare when you get to work with legends, of course, some of the people that I love in comedy, and of course, uh, Animal Adorable Rescue, just in case Nickelodeon picks this up. You're right. <laughs> Can he smell laughter? What's up, boy? <laughs> Can I just say one thing right yes, now? Yes, sir. This woman, to me, and many others, uh, uh, is a hero. And by that, I mean she, she went oh, on. <laughs> Come on, Glenn. She went on the radio at a time when the atmosphere in this country was repellent and loathsome and uncivil, and she brought a, an incredible amount of intelligence, dedication, research, wit, and passion, rarely heard on the radio, and she stuck to her gun. She was vilified by the right. I can't think of a, a, a more important person to have on your show than... And before you applaud, yeah. before you applaud! And she's funny. Fucking funny. Yeah, and she's oh, fucking yeah. funny too. Hey, Paul, who brought the uh, lube for this stroke fest you're putting on tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Do you still give a shit about all that politics? <laughs> I, I was passionate like that for about five years, and, and I don't give a fuck. Do you still? <laughs> Have you given up? To be quite honest, I, a tooth fell out. One of my teeth fell out on I grind my teeth terribly. A lot of people do, but it's because political, cultural, socio-political, social justice issues are so uh, deeply troubling. And um, not just what happened in Tucson, but everything that led up to it. And, you know, uh, with the rhetoric that comes from the right wing and the Tea Party movement and all that, which very clearly led to that. And then having to watch all the apologists what? for it. You, you don't get to that kind of um, assassination of a liberal candidate without somebody frightening somebody into doing that. The guy's a fucking insane person. Yeah, they're not mutually he exclusive. Thought a, he thought a colon would turn him from a person into a prepositional phrase. It's not That's not exclusive. because of Rush Limbaugh. That's a man from his how fucking you, medication. How do you know for sure that the messages that come from his environment don't motivate that person. They're or not from Sublime exclusive. or. Paul, can I switch seats? <laughs> Please, get me but out of it, here. In summation, in summation, because I grind my teeth so much, it cracked in half, and uh, the other night I, I had to just actually literally pull it out. Yourself? But, Did you do it? No, 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 I had to have help. Uh, government help? The government, okay. the government then put a chip in there. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, uh, that is not paranoia, Mr. Stanhope. That is a flat fact. I, and you are? I, oh, you I, guys don't know each I other? Don't know. I mean, wheel. I know who you are, but I mean, why are you here? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I understand you're incredibly funny. Yeah, I was letting you guys suck each other's dicks, and then I was going to yeah. fucking throw something in there, hopefully. That's a euphemism, isn't it? No, I was hoping oh, we could actually get to some cock sucking. <laughs> Belzer, this is this is my favorite comic, Doug Stanhoff. He is he is amazing. Right. He's Mine as well. Yeah. Mine as well. Dave Attell, Legend. just right underneath, right on right exactly. there. Exactly. Right there. <laughs> if he's the Outback Steakhouse, I'm the Sizzler. So there you go. So a little, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was the analogy part of the show. Tweet it. He had a great show that. After Hours? Insomnia, yeah, it was Insomnia. a great show. Oh, come on, Bell. You're, you're acting like you don't know. Who are you, Mark Twain? You know what's going on. <laughs> what, what the hell is happening yonder? <laughs> what the, come on. You son of a bitch, if I could get over there, I'll be there in 20 minutes. <laughs> He's gonna beat me with a slave. Hey, you know, Bell, I don't intend this as You can't innocent. hurt me, Bell. Okay, but you kind of look can't like George me. Burns with AIDS. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's not, that's not an insult. Not not the, the only time Paul has a funny bone in his body is when I fuck him in the ass. But yeah! Aside from, aside from this is like great 80s comedy, fucking balls to the wall, yeah. This is good. This is how it used to be. 
There's a couple of white guys throwing down. Yes! You know, you banned me from Catch a Rising no, Star uh, in the early get days. The fuck out. Yeah, you did. You banned me. Wow. But of course, I was probably on heroin and show. cocaine and having the waitress blow me when I said you can't go on, but don't take it personally. You, you introduced me and you, and you walked off stage and I came up to the mic and I was carrying my glass of water and I said, oh, excuse me, uh, can I put my water on the piano? You said, sure. And I went and poured it all uh, up and down the piano. I and you rest fucking banned me. fucking case. <laughs> Is that true? Is that a true story? Yeah, it's a true story, yeah. Can I apologize publicly? No, you don't need to apologize. Right. Not on this show. No one actually, will hear it. Actually, Rick... <laughs> oh. Rick. Oh. I told you, he's oh, great. You're the, you're, the, you're the master of carving out your particular audience. He is fucking amazing. My audience scares the shit out of me. It's a true story when we played Canada. I don't know if it was Calgary or Edmonton. We're trying to find the gig, and there was a, the, like a train station right in front of the gig and a big mob of fucking scary Canadians, as scary as they can be. Ah. But I'm <laughs> feeble, and I actually crossed the street to avoid going past them and then realized it was my audience waiting for ah. me. Oh, yeah, that's a great way. I literally ah. crossed the street ah. to get oh, away from my own audience. <laughs> Doug will play a bowling alley and abortion clinic. He doesn't give a shit. He's great. <laughs> he honestly is. He's good. He's the real deal. You play people's homes, right? I played a backyard uh, in Vegas, and it was fucking great. I mean, with all this social networking, it, there's no need to fucking involve clubs anymore, much less fucking comedy <laughs> bookers. Yeah. And we can go. Yeah. Yeah. We put it back to the hands of the people. Just so many people make a fucking dollar off of the talent that are just, it could be cut out, they're middlemen, they're fucking leeches, and they, they don't oh, need to exist. Up. No, they don't need to exist. You can bypass all of that. You're just too fucking lazy. Oh, come on. You're too lazy. You want a waitress to pick you up at the fucking airport so you can try to bang her. All right, Kim Jong Two. I get it. Money is evil. Yeah, but it's better, it's better the devil you know. Because if you, if you cut the clubs out, then you'll just get some shyster that you don't know coming in. You could say going, Jew, Glenn. Glenn. You could say this is America. I thought that's, shyster. I thought that's what shyster meant. <laughs> don't dance around. Do you know Glenn Wolf? Uh, Glenn and I met many years ago in the men's room at Yankee Stadium when I was changing the ice in the urinals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who gave him AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> we did a gig together in Dubai. Yo, let's oh, talk yeah, about yeah. that. Now, yeah. Janine, warm it up. Let's go. Okay, here's <laughs> Middle East. Okay, here's Here we here. go. Bill, we're going to do it down. Come on. <laughs> and, uh, well, there's a lot that precedes this, but the particular comedic high point for me was that we uh, hired the services of several Asian prostitutes. Cool. I'm right here, Paul. <laughs> Is she still on the clock? <laughs> Come on, bud. Oh, man. Wow. This is how funny Glenn is. We didn't do anything with them, except we made them parade around the house <laughs> whistling the bridge over the River no, Kwai. <laughs> funny, it's funny. We didn't make them. I, no, we didn't like, make them. Hey, like listen, it, it was an easy fucking night for them. They wanted a chore, and we didn't they wanted want to chore. have sex with what them. And I thought, we're, well, we're that'll be fun and take their mind off of uh, So let's get this straight. You're in Dubai. <laughs> Hookers mysteriously up here in your room, and you no, say, no, 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 no. whistle and out. leave. And we're supposed to fucking buy that. No, so what happened was uh, the, the guy who ran the gig, it was like a corporate sponsorship thing, and he's just used to businessmen coming to town, and he's oh, like, yeah, the drinking's done. Let's go get the hookers. Right. So he just brought a bunch of hookers, and I oh didn't want to. Janine has a similar story. Yeah, I yeah. think so. <laughs> Well, what happened to me was, um, oh, boy. I had Asian hookers, but the difference is I did want to fuck them. And so we did not whistle or anything like that. I mean, it's a business. <laughs> so we, that's, what we, that's what we did. Uh, Dave, yeah? you landed a series about porn. How perfect is that? Talking. Who are you, Piers Morgan? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Piers Morgan. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I do, I, I'm working on a show about old porn. You know, I don't have the big tissue issues that these people have here, but uh, actually, one of the stars of the show, can I get a, another one, too? Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I didn't know you had, like, uh, the Kings of Leon doing the bottle service. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hip show, dude. How hip can you be? Oh. Anyway, 
It's about porn. What do you mean? Like 50s, Like, uh, 60s? no, the golden age, like the 70s, early 80s, you know, the, uh, the whatchamacallit, your deep throat, exactly. The ones yeah. you were jacking to. When it was that. more arty. Speaking of porn, I'm in a hotel room in the 80s on the road, and my wife's movie was on the pay cable. So I'm one of the few men who has pleasured himself watching his own wife. Wow. On television. I think most of us have jerked off to Belzer's wife. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, oh no, you did. Oh, I asked for it. No, that was a compliment. I dream about my wife, so. I found a uh, Maxim or Nuts magazines that, in England. I uh, started to fondle myself to a photo of a woman in it, and only halfway Fondle through did so I amazing. realize that uh, it was my buddy's wife. Wow. <laughs> And out of respect, I stopped. <laughs> that is a nice man. There's a man. There's a... I, I just imagined her humming the river Kwai. <laughs> You're a decent man. I am. I am. And you I flipped told... the page and he came on another girl. Yeah. You're a real man. That's yeah. what you did. Yeah. Where did we work together? Cleveland. In Cleveland, which is like Baghdad with snow. I swear to God. Uh, there you go. There's only one eyebrow in that town. Yeah, you heard what I said. And, well, is a porn bit? Have you seen his porn bit? Um, I, no, I didn't do that. He didn't do it when he was there. Yeah, it's about uh, the legality of porn. Yeah. And uh, you get sent stuff, and you're not sure if it's legal. Like, we all know what porn's uh, illegal, like uh, kitty porn or coma porn or <laughs> kitty coma porn. That's the worst one. Coma porn is illegal? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was making the best of a bad situation. I don't know. <laughs> Coma porn. Without health care, you gotta make a living, come am on, I right? Come on. Terry Shiva was asking for it by the way she was dressed. <laughs> Go ahead, dude. Let's hear it. You, you know that's illegal, but there's the uh, the mid-range, like you're not, like retarded porn. Yeah. Is that illegal? Do they care? Yeah, well, should it be? What do you think? No, not at all. It shouldn't be illegal. First of all, I am so sick of the retarded people living our dreams. Porn, <laughs> um, scoring a basket halftime at a basketball game. That's our fucking dream. <laughs> I know you're Canadian and you love everybody, but these fucking tarts are stealing our dreams. I'm not out living their dream. Oh, I got here in a car made out of chocolate. That's their fucking <laughs> retarded dreams. Not porn, basketball. Prom King, I fucking, I've got a whole um, podcast on this one. <laughs> See, if this were really a green room, I'd tell I'd be going, that wasn't funny, I don't think that worked out well, I hate myself, yeah. none, none, none of this shit I'm doing is funny, I would, I'm old now, fuck I would call you like at four in the morning, hey, does anyone do tart uh, car made out of chocolate? David Tell, David Tell will call you, he's so afraid of stepping on, uh, or, or is this premise been done and he'll call you in the middle of the night? Do you do a bit about fat girls on pogo sticks? Uh, well, I had an idea, but I thought you already did it. <laughs> I don't have that bit. <laughs> Glenn, go. Let's hear the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Retarded porn. Yeah. Right. All right, go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a question of whether or not it should, it should be legal, and I think it should because. Uh, no one would say that it's wrong for retarded people to act in regular movies. Well, what if they're not very good actors? <laughs> they should have the same right that every other bad actor's had since the dawn of celluloid, and that is to turn to porn. Right. I knew I stepped on it. If they can run the cafeteria at a museum, <laughs> surely they could cut a few fuck flicks. Uh, Do it. That's a bit of, but what was the other thing about you? You know, that's the cool, that's the charm of Canadian people. They're so like enchanting and everything. Like he's a very funny dude and he's really cool. And the English guys and the Australian guys, they're right? Accommodating. Yeah, they're coming to our country and they're uh, charming they the shit out of the audiences. Not with that piece of material. No, that was a great joke, dude. I'm sorry I cock blocked you no, by throwing a fucking. Right. But that shows you how good it was. And he recovered but nicely. He did great. I give it three awkward pauses. Three right awkward now. pauses. <laughs> I think the dog's getting smoked at. Dog. <laughs> the conch. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Their noses are so powerful. I, I think know. it's too much smoke we'll for a dog. There's too much smoke for a dog. They lick their own ass. Come on. I mean, honestly. <laughs> See, that's the problem, like, you know, animal rescue and stuff like that. 
Now this is really inappropriate, so you guys can groan if you want, but like, are you involved in anim animal rescue? You are. All right, well, let me just say this. We've rescued more animals than Jews during the Holocaust. <laughs> now, it's a true fact. It's a true fact. It's wrong, but it's true. A lot of the crowd are thinking, maybe if the Jews were more helpful and could find bombs and, you know, predict earthquakes, like dogs, they would have lived. That's, that's where I was going. <laughs> Paul, what do you think? That would have been one of the cutest trainfuls of puppies, though. I'm right. I could put a puppy on a train, that's just wrong. <laughs> Even the dog liked it. Look at him, that Jew-hating motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. What? That was Why? gay. That was gay with a side of fag. That was the gayest. <laughs> My dog doesn't like the smell. I got a question. Bells, now, I, I remember seeing you at the tail end in the New York comedy scene, late 80s, when it was fun, I bet. It was probably like a blast. 70s. Fuck it, 70s, 80s, whatever. Yeah. All right, I don't no have the age, exact year. No Sorry. AIDS, Coke spoons around Am I Ken Burns? I don't know when it was, all right? <laughs> Either way, you see how he lures you in? It's beautiful. Yeah, no, but go ahead, I'm sorry. Both of you guys were having a ball. Now comedy is like, it's all this self-promotion and, you know, whatever, you gotta wear a funny hat, you gotta wear a jacket. It's just a lot of work. <laughs> it sucks. It does, it sucks. No, it's really changed, right? Yeah. We never, we never had to deal with merch. Yeah. What's merch? Yeah. See, he doesn't even know what it is. Sounds fun. <laughs> merch. I yeah, bought your fucking How to Do comedy book when I started ah. out. All right, you don't know what merch is? Yeah, man. I, I read that thing. Me too. It took me five, six years to overcome that. Ah. <laughs> ah. Oh. oh. <laughs> the master's take. I'm not down, I'm not down, I'm not down. <laughs> I wish there was someone I really didn't like on this show. Me? I'm just using you as a default. <laughs> oh, you used to use me as a punchline. Yes, I did. Give us some Paul Provenza punchline. Well, no, just, no, we, I used him I, as an example of bad 80s comedy. Oh. <laughs> well, I didn't know him. At the, at the end of the 80s, there were so many, just every fucking comic that you knew their name, but you didn't know why, and they all kind of... So I used Paul Provenza as a, Only guess, because it was an alliteration, PP. It wasn't him yeah. personally. Right. It was a funny right. name. But he was one of those. So you could have said like uh, Alan Havey or. No, or, Havey's uh, great. Provenza you know. people knew. <laughs> Havey's amazing. I love Havey. Yeah, Havey's a fucking genius. Are you still performing stand up? I mean, I, I know I've seen I, you do I, benefits. I actually and performed last Saturday night. I work with a band. Yeah. Oh. I do. <laughs> what? No way. Really? Come on. No, you don't. Bells are really? What did I do wrong? No, no, I mean, I always remember you as like the fucking no, take it to the crowd you, guy. Yeah, no, but I was brought up on full service performers, impressions, singing, falling down, working the audience. Entertainers, all around entertainers. Yeah. So I felt like I had to be full service, so. But I do impressions. I do Jagger and Springsteen. You're and, still doing Jagger? I still do Jagger. Are you doing Jagger at his age now? He's the same age as me. Oh, okay. So it works out. Do you that think your nice. Jagger was better than Overton's Jagger? Oh. I'm not trying to start a fight. Jagger off! Jagger, Jagger off! Jagger, Jagger off! The table. Jagger off! Jagger off! Jagger off! Move the table. Yeah, do it. Oh, my. Yeah. If Paula Abdul was here right now, you would be the oh. winner. That's right. Yeah. This is a telephone now. <laughs> Janine and I were on an island oh. together. That's right. We were on an island in 1992. Oh, this is a cool story. We yeah. did a comedy. We did a comedy special. It was for V. What is for some channel? And that chick. There was a funny chick. A uh, shiksa. Blonde, tall shiksa. But I'm, I'm actually... Was it Ava Braun? No, they finished. Was she there? No, she wasn't there. <laughs> Do you remember your first show after 
Wow, here we are. Oh, Doug has the best one. Oh, God, this is going to be I evil. Think so. I think oh, this is I good. So. Oh, my God, this is good. I think it was at Luna uh, on Ludlow Street. And no, it was. Uh, uh, I don't remember. It was at the Houston Laugh Stop a month after 9 11. You're right. And you announced that it was your first show, and you did say, you know what? I love Howard Zinn and I love Noam Chomsky, but it's time for them to shut the fuck I up. I did not. I swear to God you do. I'm trying to find oh, tape. Oh, nice. No way. No way. Wait a second. You did say, you know, George Bush might not speak well, and I was in. No way! I swear to God. Kick his ass, did he? I swear to God. Drag her off. Yes. Drag her off. Say it, Clay. What? I, 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 might have, I might have said something about that he might not speak well yeah, yeah, and something nice about that. Time to shut the, just no leave him alone. No way! I, I, so, no, no, I, I no remember because I, I wanted wait, to wait, rush the stage wait so a bad. I think you are misremembering what, what I said. Well, I, I only remember this clearly because I'm a drunk and I, all my memories are suspect. <laughs> But I remember clearly, because I was doing shit. I fucked George Bush. You should have prayed on fucking Tuesday. Uh -huh. you, have, you have to hear. Uh -huh. But I was doing that all week to sh getting shit. And I thought you were going to come in and do stuff that would back me up, because it was 30 days afterwards. And you're like, I don't like, you no. Know, and I, I was like, fucking I think held you, back I think from you're rushing. Mystery, I, mean, I may have said something uh, nice about George Bush. That that may well be true. But I, I uh, cannot yeah. accept mm -hmm. about the late Howard Zinn and Um Chomsky that I would have said that. And also that you take such delight yeah. in bringing that up yeah. like that, yeah. as yeah. if you want to burn my I ass. Yeah, Here, I'll tell you yeah. why I bring it up. It, we did Mark Maron's podcast. <laughs> yes. And I had made a reference. I was drunk on stage the night before that. Yeah. And then oh, when no. we went up to do the <laughs> podcast, you were there, and I felt like so such a fucking tool for like, ah, oh, so it's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Caraffalo. <laughs> when I had just trashed you on stage the night before. So I feel like a dick. Hi, Why did bro. you trash me on stage the night before? The 9-11 thing came up. It was in a riff. Right, and, and I, so what you did is you misremembered, misremembered it to that group of people. Right. And now that group of people believes what you said. That, and I, and I, and I, I, my pride will not allow me to go on record as saying Howard Zinn and Noam Chomsky should shut the fuck up. But <laughs> Let I the record stand correct. He said that. that to a group of people that he crossed the road to avoid, though. Who knows how much they're remembering of it? Yeah, that really bothers me. Well, last time I told you how much Mitch Hedberg had a crush on you, and that... Which delighted me. Exactly. So we're even. <laughs> hey, hey, it's been three minutes. No one said Noam Chomsky. What's going on here, Paul? <laughs> we're dropping the ball. We're never going to get on the cover of you know Yawn Magazine. <laughs> Do you know David Feldman? Failed, failed yeah. comedian David Feldman. <laughs> Look at him! I know, I know David. You know, I... I don't want to ruin the evening. Yeah, you couldn't possibly ruin this evening. <laughs> My first wife died after 9-11, and I just don't think it's funny. Uh, I, oh. I kissed her goodbye that morning. She went to work at the, the towers, and she borrowed my Palm Pilot. What kind of vengeful god would kill my first wife and take my Palm Pilot with all the names of my old girlfriends? <laughs> <laughs> For you to make jokes about something like that, I'm just offended. <laughs> See, you gotta, you gotta hang in with Feldo. Good point. Good point. You hang in with him, he'll get you there. Here, let's talk about the Middle East more. Okay. All right, now, the turban, not the most fun hat ever. Am I right, or what? <laughs> Paul? Thoughts? Glenn, anything? Well, you'd look good in a turban. You think so? Yeah. I'd look more like an interpreter and not a, right? Are Holy you trying shit. to get us drunk? I, all right, all right. I know this is... I know this is starting to seem like a gag, but I gotta fucking take a leak. Bells, take over. Excuse me. Did we walk Provenza? Yeah, wow. <laughs> Who's captaining the ship? There you go. I'll tell a nice Janine Garofalo story. I saw her at the Aspen Comedy Festival sit with Tom Likas, who is like just, oh, a, like, he's a fraud of, like, he wants to be. Like, he's not even a guy that is on the radar. And I asked Janine afterwards, how can you possibly sit there and pretend like that guy? Like, he's just such a made-up fucking phony. And she goes, if you just treat them like what they are, and that's what she did. She sat and talked to Tom Likas saying, you don't believe what you're saying. And she said it calmly and nicely, and I was so impressed by that. 
Thanks. <laughs> Is Paul ever coming back, you think, or no? Let's, he's oh, actually... Well, there he is. <laughs> oh. Oh, I didn't see him. I didn't see him either, right? <laughs> Showtime was just testing how this show would work without you. Uh, <laughs> wow. So, tell us about... Uh, nice seeing you. So, tell us about... Uh, <laughs> Can I just, please just shout out and say goodbye oh, to yes, Bobby Schimmel? Oh, yes, excellent. To Robert Schimmel. Robert to Schimmel. Robert Schimmel. Nice. And to Greg Giraldo! Greg Giraldo! He got one the other night, though. This Schimmel, looks good already. For those of you young people out there, Schimmel is an amazing comic. And he took everything God threw at him and he turned it into funny. And everything. I cannot say enough good things about the guy. I, I love him. I love Bob immensely. And while we're at it, the great Rich Jenny. Oh, there you go. Rich Jenny. Hey. No longer with us. Definitely. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, right? Richard Jenny passed away. He was a huge influence on me, taught me how to write a he joke a bit. And when he died, Anna Nicole Smith died. They were on fucking, they were showing that bitch like she landed on Mars for like three weeks. And then it was like, and Richard Jenny died. He was the real deal. He, he was great. He was really underappreciated. That's right. Hey, guys, please. Mr. Richard Bowser. <laughs> Mr. Glenn Wall. Ms. Janine Garofalo, you're a... Um, David Taylor, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Stanhope. Thank you all for being here. Come on back again. Good night. <laughs>